uh, we last week, we, we started out on a word from the Lord. The Lord gave me last Thursday. I was just in a time of worship and fellowship with the Lord. How many of you know the best things happen while you're just spending time with him? Amen. And um, I heard rational, experiential, tangible, transferable joy. Can you say that? Rational, experiential, tangible, transferable joy. Rational, we, and la- last week we talked about this, rational has to do with reason and logic. There is a reason that God pours joy out on his people, isn't there? And we, we, there's all kinds of scriptures about it. One of them, Nehemiah 8.10 says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And the Bible commands us to be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his mighty power. And then experiential. This isn't just head knowledge. It's not just theology, but you can experience the joy. And not only can you experience it, you can experience it because it's tangible. You can experience it like you would experience picking up a glass of water. And then, you know, you take a drink. You experience the drink, right? Where you can drink. You can drink of the wells of salvation. The Bible says it is with joy that we draw waters out of the wells of salvation. So think of joy as your bucket to drink from the different wells of salvation. We talked about that last week. And so you can, this joy is tangible and then it's transferable. Uh, you know, in the, in the 90s, Rodney Howard Brown was sent by God to America and it, there was a massive revival of, of holy laughter and joy that broke out and the church really needed it. It's good for you to laugh. It's very healthy to laugh. And you know, the Bible says, he that sits in the heavens shall laugh, right? Yep. Talking about God the Father. And you know, when you're in the audience of someone great, it's appropriate to do what they do. <laughs> so when you're sitting in the heavens with God, God the Father, and he's laughing, if nothing else, it's appropriate to give him a courtesy laugh, isn't it? He's laughing, I think I'm, if he's laughing, I'm, I'm going to be laughing too, right? right? So it would probably be good to start this sermon out with us taking a drink. How do we, how do, we do that? With joy. With joy, do you draw waters out of the wells of salvation? So what we're going to do is we're going to laugh, but I want you to laugh a little bit harder and louder than you planned on laughing and and just yield to the spirit as you do, okay? On the count of three, one, two, three. Ha, 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 Whoa, I'm feeling better already. How about you? <laughs> Glory to God. I, and I'll, I'll just say this. This is an interactive sermon. So if the joy comes all on you while we're, while we're uh, doing whatever we're doing, you just yield to it and go for it. Amen? Because we want the joy of the Lord to overtake us. We should be the happiest, the, the, the most joyful people. We should not be depressed people. We should be full of joy, full of peace, full of love, and enjoying our salvation. And uh, Psalms 126 and Isaiah 61 are going to be our two primary texts tonight. So if you want to turn over to Psalm chapter 126 and verse 1, the Bible says, When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. What does he mean by that? He means like, does this, did this just, did this really just happen? Something this good just happened to me? This good? Something, have you ever had something so great happen to you that you want to pinch yourself and say, am I dreaming or is this real? God wants to do such amazing, awesome things in your life that you have to pinch yourself to be sure that you're awake because you're like, did that just happen to me? Did God just do that for me? Hallelujah. Amen. We were like those who dream. Then what happened? Our mouth was filled, ha, 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 with laughter, ha, 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 and our tongue was singing, glory to God, hallelujah. And then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad, amen. We are glad if we even got a little bit of a revelation of all that God has done for us, we are going to be some glad people, aren't we? Let's, let's find out 
the reason we have a right to be like those who dreamed. Because that's us. When he talks about that, say, that's me. That's me. Isaiah 61 verse 1. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Imagine that. Imagine if you went to a maximum security prison tonight. And you had somehow uh, obtained clemency for every single person there. Amen? And you walked in. And people that had a life sentence without the chance of parole, the gates open, and you, and you told them, you're completely free. Oh, but not only are you completely free, here's a million dollars to start your life with. How many of you think they'd be shouting, they'd be jumping, they'd be running, they'd be, woohoo, glory to God, amen? That's what God's talking about right here. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of our God. Now, I got to part there for a second. The acceptable year of our God. The Amplified says in Luke 4 about this verse, it says, the year when the free favors of God profusely abound. Can you say the free favors of God? are profusely abounding to me. Now, guess what? The, this year that he's talking about, is an, uh, it's a period of time that we live in. We live in the year of the free favors of God profusely abounding. This isn't an occasional happening. This is our covenant. This is the reality of heaven. See, there's no time in heaven. Right? God is the great I am. So since it's always this day in heaven, this is what we always live in. I just got that as a download. See, he's in that time all the time. And because we're there, that's what we live in. We live in this day when the free favors of God profusely abound all the time, all the time, every day. What day is it today? What time is it? I'll tell you the time it is. It's the day, it's the time when the free favors of God are profusely abounding towards me. I don't know about you, but it's abounding profusely. Hallelujah. Come on, get yours. Get yours. It's available. Amen. Glory to God. Now, it's interesting, the day of vengeance of our God is not in Luke chapter 4, because that's not the time we live in. That's in the future, so praise the Lord for that. Amen? Go, go read Luke chapter 4. To comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. Now, what is this beauty for ashes? If you read this in other translations, you'll find that when people are mourning a death of a loved one or some tremendous tragedy, they would take their head headdress off and they would put ashes on their head. It was a sign of mourning. It was a, a sign of extreme pain and emotional trauma and suffering. And God says, I'm taking that off and I'm going to give you beauty. In other words, I'm going to put something on your head that's more beautiful than anything you've ever had. Amen? Beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Now, look at this. As we look through this passage of scripture, it starts Isaiah 61, which is the anointing that was upon Jesus. That is anointing on every believer today, right? Right? The anointing, the anointing of God, this is the job description of the anointing. And, and there's different people in the body of Christ that are anointed to do, to specialize in different facets of these anointing. Amen? And so anyway, bottom line is, what is the end game of this passage of scripture? It is complete healing, complete salvation, complete deliverance, right? The gospel to the poor. What's the gospel to the poor? You don't have to be poor anymore. For the grace of, you know, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. The might is only there because there's things you have to do to act on the covenant by faith. And when you do it, that might becomes a definite yes. Amen? It's not a roll of dice and maybe it will, maybe it won't. No, it's in your power. It's in your control. God's put the ball in your hands. Isn't that good news? But this passage of scripture 
describes people completely healed, completely delivered, completely set free, no depression, no fear, no worry, no lack, no poverty, no sickness, no disease, full of joy. Amen? You know, there's a saying, hurting people hurt people. We say that sometimes. But why don't we say healed people heal people? Amen. How many healed people do we have here? Oh yeah, healed people. What do they do? They heal people. Now, so Isaiah 61 verses 1 through 3 describes the healing that we receive personally through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. All this is available all that we appropriate by faith, which means we've got a hear about it, which means God will send us a preacher that will preach us a message that will teach us the truth so that we can receive what he has released and paid for us to have. Amen? Because it's just like if you had a bank, but you didn't know what bank that million dollars is in and you didn't know the account number, you need somebody to tell you it's in this bank and here's the account number. Now go get it, Right? You still got to go to the bank and get it, but it, it belongs to you already. In your spiritual account, all these things are provided for already by Jesus, by what he did. In other words, he doesn't go to the cross again to give it to you. It's already paid for. Yes, Amen? Yes. And it's like if, if you just got, you know, somebody handed you a gift certificate to Mah- Mahogany Prime Grill and said, go enjoy dinner after uh, service. You know, here's 200 bucks, go enjoy dinner. You can just go and, and get you a nice whatever you want, Right? Because you, you just got blessed, right? And so God's already done that for you. He's like, I've already blessed you. Take it and go enjoy it. Amen. Yes. Healed people, heal people. And that's what we see in verse four. These people that were brokenhearted, that were mourning, that were depressed, that were had all these issues and problems. We all start with issues and problems, but he saves us. Amen. How many of you know that's both instantaneous salvation And then it's walked and worked out progressively. The Bible says to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, right? By the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Amen. Amen. I said, amen. Amen. (laughs) The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. The fear of the Lord is wonderful. So these people in Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 3, receive this blessing of deliverance and healing and wholeness and joy and salvation and what happens to him. We find out what they start doing because they receive something in verse four. And they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Healed people restore cities. Amen? They heal the land. How many of you know God has a plan and it is for his covenant people, his remnant to go in and heal the land and to bring salvation and to bring joy and to bring redemption. Amen. He uses healed people to heal. Verse five, strangers shall stand and feed your flocks and the sons of the foreigners shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. Right here we find out God's favor will cause the nations to serve you. But you know what? Even though they're serving you in the process, they're getting blessed by you. They're getting blessed by you. It isn't that you're using them. They're getting blessed because the blessing that is on you is going to come upon them. Now, God made, we see this in the scripture with Lot. Lot didn't have a covenant word from God, did he? He didn't have a promise from the Lord. The Lord's promise was with Abraham. But Lot had more sense than a lot of Christians. He did. Why? Because he said, Abraham's rich. Abraham's blessed. I'm going to go hang around Abraham, and I'm going to get some of the overflow that comes off of Abraham. And how many of you know Abraham was so blessed, and Lot was wise enough to be around him, right? And the blessing that was on Abraham now started to get over on Lot, and Lot got blessed mega blessed so blessed that him and Abraham had to take different zip codes because their flocks couldn't stay on the same land because they had so much stuff how many of you know that's excessive prosperity how many of you are okay with excessive prosperity (laughs) I'm okay with it (laughs) just means you have more to give amen more to give more blessed to be even more of a blessing let's look at verse five 
And we already did. How about we go on from there? Isaiah chapter 61, verse six. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory, you shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Hallelujah. This is the other scripture tonight that I really felt like the Holy Spirit was zeroing in on that is a word for us tonight. And notice the first thing he talks about, you will have double honor because you're a kingdom of priests of and sons and servants of the Most High God. Did you know your identity? That's who you are. You are not just sons of God. You are beloved sons of God. Can you say that? I'm a beloved son of God. Uh, so there's no gender in, in the spirit realm. We're, we're all sons of God, amen? And you're a beloved son of God. You are so valuable to God. You are supernatural royalty. Think about that. You know, we, we look at royalty in society and we look at, wow, royalty. Isn't that amazing? But guess what? You are, you're the real thing. You're the real deal. You really are royalty. Now he says this in this passage, the riches of this world are your inheritance. Do you, let me ask you a question. Do you think that when God created the heavens and the earth and he blessed the earth and he looked at it and he said, it is very good. Did you notice that? Read through Genesis. God says over and over, and it was good, and it was good, and it was good, and it was very good, right? God, God didn't look at the earth and go, oh, I don't want any of this world's goods. I don't want anything in this world. No, he created the world and the fullness thereof for his man, Adam. Now we know what happened. Adam fell. Satan became the God of this world, blah, blah, blah. But Jesus redeemed us, and now we are sons of God, and God does not want the riches, the wealth, the blessings of this earth in the hands of the devil and his kids. And yes, the devil has kids. There are humans on this earth that are children of the devil. Read your New Testament. John 8, 44, Jesus said to the religious leaders of his day, you are, are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. Why did he say that? They weren't born again. They were in the kingdom of darkness, but the gospel was coming. And now the gospel has come. You know what the gospel is? You can be taken out of the kingdom of darkness and you can go from being a son of the devil and having a demonic nature wanting to fulfill the lusts of your flesh, the desires of the flesh and of the mind and by nature being a children of wrath. You can come out of that and now you can be translated in the kingdom of the son of his love and have the nature of God in you and have the desires of God in you and have the joy of the Lord and be a son of God and become a new species of being, one that never existed before. This is the gospel. The gospel is not cleaning you up and washing you off. The gospel is a new creation in Christ, one that never existed before and you are given righteousness as a gift, hallelujah, not something you earn, not I'm cleaning myself and getting better. No, 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 no. Jesus made you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So you're just as righteous right now as you're ever going to be. Hallelujah. And you didn't earn a bit of it, but you can sure be thankful for it when you realize that he did earn it and the price that he paid. The riches of this world are your inheritance. Now, the Bible says this, for your former shame, God says he is rewarding you with double. Can you say that? God is rewarding me for my former shame with double. Now, here's the thing. This double, the, the Bible says, therefore, in their land, how many of you know land is a physical, natural thing? In their land, they shall possess the double. The land from a spiritual standpoint also refers to the spiritual territory God is giving you and called you to. So this is both a natural blessing and it's a supernatural blessing. It's not either and, but it's both, isn't it? God says, I'm going to give you double. <laughs> we're not going to Ireland, but we're Dublin, right? <laughs> we might go to Ireland too, who knows? But anyway, hallelujah. How many of you are Dublin? <laughs> you're doubling glory to God with God's goodness, with God's love, with God's blessings. He's, he's bringing double to us. Amen. Yes. Double for your trouble. Now I looked up double 
because I just wanted to make sure what double means, and it's really simple. Everybody say, twice as much. Twice as much. That's what it means, twice as much. How many of you like twice as much? Amen. (laughs) Well, I might have too much. Well, then you would be scriptural. (laughs) You would be scriptural if you had too much because God's, his, his name is actually what, church? Too much. El Shaddai, many breasted one, too much. That's his name. That's the God we serve. Amen. <laughs> I think about Leroy Thompson before he found out about God's promises of blessing and increase and walked in prosperity. He was he was a Baptist and he said he had one one suit and he ironed that suit so many times it looked like glaze. It was so shiny. Amen. <laughs> and he said, like preaching, like pew. Amen. But no, God is giving a revelation to his people because he wants you blessed, 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 abundantly blessed. Amen. Now, you need to stop and take just a moment to inventory anything the enemy has stolen from you. Anything that you've lost, anything that's been unjustly stolen, taken, ripped away from you, you name it, whatever it may be in your life. And it's time to take the inventory and then decide you're receiving double. You're receiving double. So make the devil pay. Make him pay double. Amen? Double for his trouble. (laughs) Now, You might ask this question, why is this happening? It all sounds good, but there's something in me that needs to know why. How many of you need to know why? It's okay. It's it's not a trick question. Uh, It's okay to understand why this is available to us. In Romans chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says this, For if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one. Now, whose offense are we talking about? We're talking about Adam's offense. What happened when Adam sinned? Death reigned. Now, what is death? Death is to be separated from the life and nature of God. That's what death is. When you are separated from the life and nature of God, you die spiritually. Amen? When you die spiritually, all kinds of other really bad stuff starts happening, like you eventually die physically. In other words, you can't physically die without dying spiritually. It's impossible. Jesus died, just food for thought. Anyway, you can't physically die without dying spiritually first. You have to die spiritually first. And so spiritual death was introduced through Adam. And the Bible says death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who didn't know the law, right? Death reigned. Why? There was, there was nothing to deal with the spiritual death. So, the, so spiritual death was reigning. Here's a byproduct of spiritual death. Poverty is a byproduct of spiritual death. If you were to stretch a microphone to Adam before the fall and say, hey, Adam, can you describe poverty to me? Adam would have gone, what is poverty? I've never heard of poverty. What does it mean? I, what is poverty? Every, if you read Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2, God's telling uh, Adam, uh, the onyx is over here. The gold's over here. And by the way, the gold is good. As a matter of fact, the Garden of Eden had four rivers converging together in it. So it was an oasis. I'm just saying. <laughs> it was an oasis. Anyway, so spiritual death. Spiritual death was raining on all mankind. And spiritual ref, death is described as the curse, and the curse of the law describes it. The curse of the law describes spiritual separation from God, sickness in your body, diverse kinds of diseases, all kinds of diseases, and poverty and lack. And captivity and bondage, all kinds of things. How many of you want any of that? (laughs) You shouldn't want any of that, right? And so think about this. When God came to redeem us, he redeemed us. For death, he gives us life. For sickness, he gives us health. For uh, poverty, he gives us wealth. For death, he gives us eternal life. Amen? So Jesus came to redeem us completely. Here's how it happens. For by one man's offense... Death reigned through the one, that's Adam, much more. Can you, now, now I, before we go on to the much more, think about this. How effective, how effective was Adam's sin in causing death to reign? Affected the whole earth? Affected every person who's ever lived? It was, could we say it was very effective? We could very conservatively say that Adam's sin was very effective at contaminating and poisoning the entire uh, sea of humanity 
with not one person excluded with the curse that came from disobeying God's law. Amen? Now, that's important to understand because Paul says, if Adam's sin did this, he starts out with much more. Can you say much more? And in other words, whatever Adam's sin did bad, Jesus' redemption does better. Hallelujah. Much more, those who receive. Uh Uh-oh. When I read those who receive, that means I've got something to do with this. You've got something to do with this. I've got to receive this. In other words, just because Jesus does it doesn't mean it's going to fall on my head like ripe cherries off a tree. I've got to do something to appropriate the promises of God, right? Those, much more, those who receive, you know, in the Greek, the word receive is take. It's literally take. So we don't get it with receive. I found people don't understand receive. How do I receive? Take. You take. Say this. I'll take it. it. Reach your hand out. I'll I'll take it. I'll take it. You're getting good. That's that's a very good start right there. I'll take it. What does he mean? Those who receive, those who take what Jesus provided. I can't take anything from God. You're not. He already gave it to you. He's actually waiting for you to pick it up. It's right there in front of you. Matter of fact, Jesus said it this way. The kingdom of God is at hand. It's this close. Already done, already provided to you. I've talked to different prophets who saw in the spirit realm, like if somebody needed uh, a, a new organ in their body, they would literally see that organ floating in the air like this close to them. Like God's like waiting, when are you going to take your new organ? When are you going to take this? When are you going to take this? It's like right there. Like they don't even have to reach out for it. It's like, that got it. Amen. But we got to get our mind renewed to understand that the things which are seen are not made which with things which do appear. They're made from the unseen realm. Amen. And how to receive from that and how to take from that unseen realm. So he says much more those who receive abundance. Oh boy, this is hard to get through this verse. That's okay. That's a good problem to have. Abundance of grace. Not a little bit of grace. Abundance of grace. Can you say abundance of grace? (laughs) What do you think God thinks abundance looks like? Think of how big our universe is. And he's like, I can hold that in the palm palm of my hand. It's no big deal. And we go to the universe and go, I don't know how to quantify how big this is. We can't even figure out how big our Milky Way galaxy is and perceive it. It's so big. It's just incomprehensible. And God says abundance. That must be a lot of grace. Amen? I would say too many Christians are walking up to a tanker truck that holds 8,000 gallons of grace with a thimble and just opening enough to get a little thimble when they've got a tanker truck or they've got an ocean, better yet, of grace available. Expand your receiving, church. Expand your thinking. Expand your receiving because it's already a done deal. It's already there for you. Amen? Abundance of grace. Now, what is grace? It's unmerited favor. Can you say unmerited favor? It's funny how we work. When we read unmerited favor, all we hear is unmerited. And we start thinking, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of that favor. No, no, no. It's unmerited favor, but it's favor. Amen? It's the favor of God. It just means you didn't earn it, and, and, but you get it anyways, a free gift. Just another part of the goodness of God because of his redemption. Amen? The abundance of grace, of unmerited favor. Remember, we talked about the day when the free favors of God profusely abound, and that's the day that we live in all the time, 24-7. Amen? All the time, the day of the free favor of God profusely abounding. The next part is so awesome. He says, and receiving the gift of righteousness. Again, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen? It's not eating and drinking, Romans 14, 17. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You can't have joy in the Holy Ghost, and you can't have peace till you understand righteousness. If you're still stuck on righteousness, what you're stuck on is your performance, and you're operating in performance-based religion, and you're trying to earn the approval and the favor of God instead of receiving the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus paid it all for you. Hallelujah. And the scandal of grace is he gets what I deserve, and I get what he deserves. Hallelujah. That's the scandal of grace, and it's a good scandal, unlike most scandals, right? The gift of righteousness. Can you say the gift of righteousness? 
See, if you've been born again, you've been, you've received the gift of righteousness, which works in your spiritual account, in your spiritual ledger, that you are just as righteous as God in your spiritual ledger. There's that fact of it. But it is righteousness is a force working in you. How many of you know as a Christian you can sin, but you can't enjoy it anymore? How many of you know that, right? Why? Because you'll be guilty because the righteous nature of God is in you and your spirit man does not want to sin. Now you have a body that you have to deal with. You have a mind that you have to renew, but your spirit is is righteous and your spirit does not want to sin. Amen? And you can't enjoy sin anymore, so you might as well just quit because why do you want to do something you don't enjoy, right? (laughs) Amen. And he says, the gift of righteousness, you re- receive an abundance of unmerited favor from God. You receive the gift of righteousness from God. What is going to happen when a believer gets these two revelations? You are going to reign in life. One translation says, reign as kings. Hallelujah. Reign as kings in life. You ever met a poor king? I haven't. All the kings I read about are rich. Amen. Amen. God wants you to reign as a king in life, to be blessed, to be blessed. Amen? Amen. Don't let your past experience forfeit you or condition you to what is possible. Don't let other people's failure to receive hold you back for what God wants to do for you. You can have what God said. It belongs to you. Don't you let your mind, don't let somebody else's experience. Listen, I've prayed for people who have been healed. I've prayed for people that have been raised from the dead. And I prayed for people and watched them go on and be with Jesus. I am not going to develop my doctrine of healing and miracles and the redemption of God based on my experience. There's things I put into the cloud. What do you mean the cloud? I just put it up in the cloud. That'll be something I'll find out later. I don't need to know. Matter of fact, I purposely tell the Lord, if somebody doesn't get healed, I don't need to know Jesus. I don't need to know. Why? Because there's thing, I'm on a need to know basis. And there's just some things I don't need to know. And if the Lord sees fit, like one time I prayed for somebody and they were healed for a period of time. Their cancer stopped two years later. And, the, and I went to pray for them and God said, I can't heal them. They've got unforgiveness. And they wouldn't repent of the unforgiveness and they died three months later. Wasn't my faith that was a problem, but God protected me because I was a baby Christian. He protected me so my faith wouldn't get damaged with the answer. But it also taught me something. I don't know. I, all, I don't know all the dynamics of everything that's happening, but I'm going to build my life on the Word of God. It's forever settled in the heavens. It is the truth. It's the pillar and ground of the church. Is the pillar of ground of the truth because it has the truth of God's word. That's what I'm building my life on, not somebody else's experience. But I want to be an experience for somebody to look to and say, wow, if God did that for them, he'll do it for me. That's my goal. That's one of my goals. Amen? Not to glorify me, but to show people the covenant that Jesus has provided for you to have and to live in it and walk in it and enjoy it. And say, this is for you. It's for all of you. Reign in life as kings. That's what he has for you. You're a king. You're a queen. (laughs) Amen. Jesus said it in John 10, 10. The thief does not come, but we know, steal, kill, and destroy, right? He said, but I am come that they might. There's that word might again. (laughs) Why is it in there? Because you got to take. You got to take. Got to say, I'll take it. it. Amen. Amen. I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. We know what that means in the Greek, right? You can tell me because I've told you. I've said this a lot of times. The Greek word is perisos. And it means super abundant in quantity, superior in quality, excessive. I was driving the other day, and uh, I, I, I drove past this guy. Uh, he, he was parking, and he got out of this Rolls Royce. It was a yellow Rolls Royce and a sedan convertible Rolls Royce. And it had wings that, or uh, doors that opened like this instead of like this. That's pretty cool. Some people might call that excessive. God doesn't call that excessive. 
God just calls that normal, right? That's just normal. So I, I got a chance to see just what's normal. Amen. And that's, that was quite normal in the kingdom because God is super abundant in quantity, superior in quality, excessive. Well, that's excessive. Good, then it's kingdom. If it's not excessive, it's not kingdom. Amen. You know, it's always been his plan. It's always been his will. It's always been his desire to bless, to prosper, to heal, to deliver, to fill you with joy, to fill you with his peace and fill you with his love. Matter of fact, whatever you're missing, there's an invitation in John 16, 23. It goes like this. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. That day is this day. Jesus said that. In that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Hitherto, which means up until now, have you asked nothing in my name? Ask, and you shall receive that your joy may be full. I would say we need to get to asking. We need to not be passive. People don't pray because they don't have faith, because they have drifted off the course into unbelief and stopped exercising their faith in prayer. So if you need to take that and wake up, it's time to do it. Get active in your prayer life and get boldly asking and taking from God what belongs to you. You need to understand you're righteous because when you understand you're righteous, you understand you're pre-qualified. Have you ever gone to buy a home and the bank says, you're pre-qualified for X amount of dollars. That means you can buy any house up into that amount of money, right? And God has pre-qualified you for his blessings and his goodness. Listen to the Living Bible. You haven't tried this before, but begin now. Ask using my name and you will receive and your cup of joy will overflow. Amen. God wants your cup of joy to overflow, church. Hallelujah. You know, when you understand that heaven was willing to go bankrupt, to ransom you, you begin to understand that your very worth and value is the very blood of Christ himself. How valuable are you? How much does God love you? How much are you worth? That's the terms you need to think in. That heaven was willing to go bankrupt to ransom and redeem you. Amen? And it's his absolute joy. It's the Father's absolute joy to give you the very desires of your heart. It really is. It brings him, when you are lit up with joy, it brings him joy. Amen. It really does. Isaiah 35, 10 says this. This is, this is us. This is talking about us. I love this. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return. And come, they've been, they were exiled, but he says they're coming back. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain, there's that possess again. It's you possessing something. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Hallelujah. Now he said, you're going to obtain joy and gladness. Notice two different words. This is kind of like in, in Matthew 4 where Jesus healed all their sicknesses and diseases. I get intrigued when I see redundancy in scripture and I know it's an invitation to go deeper to study. Amen? Because the last time I did that, when, when I saw Jesus healed all their sicknesses and disease, didn't you think when you think of sicknesses and diseases, that's pretty much the same thing? A sickness is a disease and a disease and a si is a sickness? No, diseases are all the ailments, you know, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, blah, 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 whatever you'd want to say like that. That's diseases. Sickness in the Greek is weakness. You're not just redeemed from disease. You're redeemed from weakness itself. That's why he said, I'll run through a troop and I'll jump over a wall. You don't have to become weak as you get older. I said, you don't have to become weak. You're redeemed from weakness. Did you know that? Well, here he says, you're going to be filled with joy and gladness. I kind of like that. So I wanted to figure out what, what is the difference between joy and gladness. Joy means cheerfulness, welcome, and rejoicing. 
So joy is, is, is cheerfulness and rejoicing and you're, you're a very, very welcoming person because you're just, you have a light spirit, you a joyful spirit, amen, that's who you are. But then he says gladness. Gladness means glee. <laughs> what is glee? It's like a kid in, on Christmas morning who runs, I remember as a kid running down the stairs, can't wait to get to the bottom of the stairs and see what's under the Christmas tree and then jumping up and down because I was excited. Do you remember anything like that? Maybe you've got a memory similar to that, but you're filled with glee because something great happened to you, right? Something wonderful happened to you and you're overwhelmed with joy. But gladness not only means to have glee, it means to have pleasure. Oh my goodness, pleasure? Yep, pleasure. (laughs) God's the one that created pleasure. In your presence, Psalm 1611, is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Listen, if you're trying to serve the devil, going after pleasure, you have been deceived. God is the one that has the greatest pleasure. When you do it God's way, amen. The gladness means to rejoice, to party, or feast. How many of you like to party and feast? Hallelujah. Party and feast. Hallelujah. Gladness. Glory to God. So you're happy, you're filled with joy, and you're partying and feasting and having a great time. Why? Because you're filled with his joy and gladness. Amen. The the root of these two words denotes being glad or joyful with the whole disposition as indicated by its association with the heart, the soul, and with the lighting up of the eyes. Now listen to this verse, Proverbs 15, 15. In the Amplified, it says this, all the days of the desponding and afflicted are made evil by anxious thoughts and forebodings. But he who has a glad heart has a continual feast regardless of circumstances. You can go through life foreboding, depressed, anxious, thinking about all the things. You know, worry is the dark room where all your negatives are developed. Stay out of that dark room. Stay out of worry. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Notice known unto God, not unto men. Some people are really good to talking to people about their problem. They should get good to talking to God about their problem because he's the one that's commissioned to do something about it. Amen. Let your request be made known unto God. He is El Shaddai. He's got an abundant supply for you. But he who has a glad heart has a continual feast. I want to live in a continual feast, don't you? Whether I'm eating a feast or not, I just want to live in a continual feast. What does that mean? I'm just having a, a, I'm just, my life is just a party of joy because I love Jesus and he loves me and, and he's got a purpose and a destiny. It's unfolding. Every day is getting brighter. My path is getting brighter and lighter. And every day there's increase, there's increased blessing, increased influence, increased fruitfulness. How many of you are trusting God for all these things, knowing it's in his word? Amen. Amen. Continual feast. But we, church, we must obey God's commandments. (laughs) I'm being a little tricky right here. Here's the commandments I want to remind you of as we wrap this up tonight. It's Nehemiah chapter eight and verse nine. Now, what this passage is about is Israel had lost the scripture. They had lost it. They had lost the law. Uh, It was gone. And finally it got found And they said, we are going to read the entire Pentateuch, the five books of Moses. We're going to read the books of the law for everybody to hear. And it's going to be a holy uh, convocation as everyone, everyone came together to read the books of the law. And this is... Uh, picking it up, and they've just read the books of the law, Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 9. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Verse 10. Then he said to them, go your way. Eat the fat, drink the sweet, 
and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Verse 11, so the Levites quieted all the people saying, be still for the day is holy. Do not be grieved. Amen. Amen. It's time to redefine holiness. Some of you, your first definition definition of holiness was how depressed a person could be. Amen. <laughs> That's holy. I'm being holy. I'm I'm depressed. I'm I'm uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at all the things that I don't get to do. <laughs> I'm focused on that. I can't do this and I can't do that. I can't do this and I can't do that. That's not holiness, church. That's holiness gone, gone amok. This was a holy day. Everybody say a holy day. And there was instructions. And how many of you know we are to be holy? How many of you know Holy Spirit is the spirit that's within us? I even like in the Passion Translation, it doesn't call him Holy Spirit. It calls him the spirit of holiness. I like that. Helps me get it because you can just start thinking Holy Spirit and forget about what holy means, right? But Holy Spirit. So what does it mean to be holy? Here was the instructions of what not to do. There's some do's and some do nots. You need to follow these to a T. (laughs) Here's what not to do. Do not weep. (laughs) Can you say that? Do not weep. That's number one. That's the first instruction. If you're going to be holy, do not weep. The second instruction to be holy, do not mourn. Can you say that? Do not mourn. You're you're right on track. You're getting this. The third instruction, do not sorrow. Let's say it together. Do not sorrow. And finally, the fourth instruction is do not be grieved. Let's do it together. Do not be grieved. You got it. You guys, you're getting it, right? Don't weep. Don't mourn. Don't sorrow. Don't be grieved. What are you to do? Number one, be full of joy. Can you say that? Be full of joy. joy. Number two, eat the fat. (laughs) Eat the fat. I think they were doing the keto diet here. (laughs) Uh, No, no, it won't work because it says drink the sweet next. So (laughs) number three, drink the sweet. Amen. So they were have they were told if you want to be holy, don't mourn, don't weep, don't sorrow, don't grieve, don't be depressed. If you're doing that, you're not representing Jesus the way you should be. Oh boy. Somebody's going to send me a letter and I don't care. You know, there is an instruction in James chapter four or three where it talks about repenting and mourning and being sorrowful. And if you need to repent and mourn as you repent, that's appropriate. That's scriptural in the New Testament. But that's only a little space of time that you do that and you move right back into full-time joy mode. Full-time joy mode is where we live. Amen? In the new covenant, it's where we live. Joy. He wants us full of joy. He wants us living in joy. Why? The joy of the Lord is your strength. You're supposed to be strong in the Lord and the strength of his mighty power. The only way you can do that is being full of his joy. You stay full of his joy, you're going to be strong in the Lord. You're going to walk in victory. Amen. Amen? How many of you like to walk in victory? What's victory mean? It means you win. You're the victor. And you can't be a victim and a victor at the same time. So if you got a victim mentality, you're automatically defeated. Seriously. Careful. Be cautious who you fellowship with. If they're always talking about how they're disenfranchised and they don't have this opportunity and they don't have this and they don't have this, listen. Listen, church, for your own good. You need to surround yourself with people who understand the blessings and benefits of the kingdom because it trumps all the other stuff. Listen, I'm not saying that that this world is a fair playing field. I'm not making that, I'm not saying that because I don't believe it is. I'm just being honest. The world, the world is corrupt, but we're not in the world. We're in the world, but the world should not be in us. It should not be in our mind or our heart. 
The kingdom is in our mind. The kingdom is in our heart. And I'm telling you, the one that's in you is greater than he that's in the world. And if you'll believe the gospel, the greater one on the inside of you will supernaturally empower you and supernaturally bless you and supernaturally favor you and supernaturally promote you. And it doesn't matter where you started. Where you started is not where you have to live and where you have to finish because El Shaddai is your daddy. Amen? But it's time to, uh, for us to go and take, take. We, we've heard all through this word today about receiving, about taking what belongs to us. What does that mean? It means that Jesus has paid a great price for us to have this great redemption. And where he wants you and I to live is <laughs> he wants us to live daily like them that, were, that dreamed because our life just keeps getting better and better. Does that mean you won't have any opportunities to use your faith? Does that mean you won't have any tribulation? No, the Bible says you'll, in this world, you're going to have some tribulation, but be of good cheer. Jesus has overcome the world. And that means the overcomers inside of you. Amen. And he wants us to live in joy. He wants us to understand that he is restoring our joy and for our shame, he is giving us double. Amen double. Hallelujah. Think about it. What have you lost? What has the enemy stolen? What has the enemy taken for you? God wants to give you double. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to say thank you tonight for your word. We want to say thank you that you have redeemed us with the precious blood of Christ and you've assigned us a value to us. And that value is the very blood of Jesus himself. That is the value you've put upon us. But Father, so many of us have put a wrong value on ourselves. We have not seen ourselves through your eyes. We have not seen who we are in Christ in the new creation. And Father, I pray that you will help us to awaken to that identity and that righteousness so that we can walk in the blessings and the benefits because they've already been purchased for us, Father. You want to, your, your redemption is not just so we can win the world, although it is to win the world, but it's also that we could have life and that more abundantly here and now. And Father, that that, that uh, life that we walk in with you is so attractive, that joy that we have. So Father, I just thank you right now for restoring joy to your people, just restoring their joy. Father, that if there's anything missing that they would practice John chapter 16 and that they would ask that they may, and they shall receive that their joy would be full, that if there's anything, Lord, that's, that's holding back their joy, Lord, that you would bring healing and deliverance, that you would bring prosperity and increase, Father, that you would bring justice to them, Father. Lord, we bless you and we praise you and we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Your, your word says, with joy do you draw waters out of the wells of salvation. And Father, we don't want to go through life sober because your word says, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Father, we want to go through life uh, intoxicated by your spirit, filled with your spirit, uh, drinking the new wine every day, living in that joy, living in that laughter. So Father, teach us to be really, really, really good drinkers because when we become good drinkers, we start to become really good thinkers as a byproduct. Hallelujah. The better we drink, the more we drink, the better we think, Father. Ha ha. Glory to God. Church, we need to do some drinking. Let's do some drinking. Hallelujah. Ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Whoa. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Whoa. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. Ha, 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 Thank you for the new wine and the new wine flowing into us. The wine of heaven. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Fill us afresh, Lord. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Double dose. Double dose. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. 
ha, ha, what am I doing? I'm taking what belongs to me. You can take what belongs to you. Ha, 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 ha. Just grab your barrel like this. Just grab your barrel and ha, 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 ha. Take a big drink, church. Take a big drink. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you know, kids, they laugh 400 times a day. Adults, 30, 30 times a day. And Jesus said that we need to become as little children. What does that mean? You need to stop being so serious and you need to learn how to laugh and be filled with the joy of the Lord. Amen. Let's try it again. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Well, that's not very dignified. Well, dignity is not a fruit of the Spirit. I, I can find love, joy, peace, you know, a lot of other fruits of the Spirit. But listen, I don't see dignity in there. Dignity is not a fruit of the Spirit. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, ha, ha. You're getting stronger. Ha, ha, ha. Whoa. Ha, 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 ha. 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 Ha, 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 Whoa, shaka da 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 ba da da ba da If you want a fresh, ha, fresh joy, come down here, line up. Ha, 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 ha. If you want hands laid on you for a fresh dose of joy, come down here. Ha, 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 ha. Sugar da 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 ba da 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 ha, 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 ha. Now, when we lay hands on you, don't pray in tongues. Yield. Begin to laugh. Begin to yield to that joy. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Whoa, put your hand on her stomach. Ha, ha. Out of your belly. Bubbling up out of your belly. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Whoa. Ha, 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 ha. So, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> have a drink, have a drink, have a drink, 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 drink some more. <laughs> Come on, church, drink. Don't look, drink. <laughs> <laughs> Keep drinking. Keep drinking. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 Ha, 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 ha,